Hi and welcome back to my channel. This is Marla and I'm so glad that you're joining me today for another Scrappy Tail Crafts video. Today's card features die cuts with watercolor pens. I'm going to be using my Tombow watercolors and then I have the Stitch Daisy Blooms die from Scrappy Tail Crafts. I've cut out a few of the dies the die cut pieces from this set. There are larger flowers. There are a couple of different centers that you can use for the flowers. I cut the word thanks, which is included three times, the butterfly once, one flower with two layers, and then one of the leaf stems. I'm going to be using some purple tones for my flower. I was looking for different colors of daisies. I didn't want white, I didn't want yellow, and I did find a purple variety, and I thought that using um, the purple would really add a nice pop of color to my card. I have die cut my pieces using Bristol Smooth cardstock. I have the Strathmore brand. This works really well with these watercolor pens. If you have Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers, the Bristol works really well with that also. And so I went direct to paper with my darkest color, which is the darkest of the purples. You can see I have a dark purple and then I have a mid-tone and a light lavender. I don't end up using that mid-tone. I just go with a two-tone for this particular flower. Um, I'm using my blending brush or my watercolor brush. And when I when I am working with water and these Tombow markers, instead of using the water that's in the well, I squeeze it out on the side of my glass mat and I just dip into it as I see fit. So I added that bit of color. You notice that I didn't add it all over the petal, just more towards the center. And then I'm using that watercolor brush to blend that out just a little bit. Once I finished with that, I'm going direct to paper with my lavender and I'm filling in any of those white spaces. This time I did not use any water to blend it and that's the beauty of these watercolor pens is that you can choose to use them with or without water. Now I have this wine colored pencil. This is some off brand of colored pencil that I have on hand and I wanted to change a little bit of the color. So when you mix two colors together, as you know in color theory, uh, adding more of a wine with the purple is going to give me a different tone and it's also going to add a little bit of texture with those uh, pencil strokes on those petals. Once I finish with that, I'm bringing back in that purple pen and I am doing a flicking motion this time. So the first time I just kind of laid it out in the center of each of the petals. This time I added a little bit of flicking and I did not blend that out, giving it a little bit more texture. I added kind of a golden yellow to the center circle for my flower. And then here you're going to see that I can color directly to paper using this Bristol Smooth cardstock and it is a citron color so this is going to be my base color and you notice that I'm coloring up the whole thing I'm not going to use any water on this particular stem this time I am just going to go directly to paper and leave it as it is so I'm adding some textures little flicks with this olive color so the olive and the citron work beautifully together I'll go down the stem and each of the leaf stems and then I'm going again to bring in, this is going to be more of a vibrant green, but it's still going to add a little bit more texture to my die cut. So this is another one of those colored pencils. I'll go down the stem once, and then I realize that I want it just a little bit darker. And so I'll just go to the side instead of the point of my pencil to get that color down and get it a little bit more saturated.
So I wanted to add some shine to this and a little bit of texture or bulk. And so this time I'm going to do some heat embossing. I am dipping each of my die cuts into my VersaFine ink and then I'm going to add some clear embossing powder over the top of it. I have my Wagner heat tool. This is the heat tool that actually has two settings. So there's a low and a high. I am using the high setting to do the heat embossing. Later on, I will use the low setting to dry a piece of cardstock that I add some watercolor to. So it's a nice uh, benefit to not have to have two different heat tools. The jury's still out on how I like using just one heat tool. I'm trying to get used to holding it. It's a little stubbier, so holding it in my hand um, trying to get used to that, but I do like that it has two different settings that allows me to use it for two different purposes. So here I'm coloring up my butterfly. I started out with kind of a raspberry pink, added a little bit of wine right here, and then I added that same purple, that deep purple that I used on my flowers. I'm adding the olive to the center of the body, so this is going to tie in some of my colors together. Here's where I squeeze that brush and I'm going to just try to blend some of this out. I do over blend one side of the butterfly. You'll notice that I take off a little bit too much color, so when you're using that water, it can take off color, it also moves color, and it ended up taking off more color than what I wanted. So I I am going to dry it and when I dry it I'll co come back in with my dark purple pen on that one side of the butterfly. Um, I'll add a little bit more of that deeper purple, blend it out, and then I'll add a little bit more to the right side as well. I'm going around the outside edge of these die cut pieces just so that the white doesn't show. It'll show pink instead. And this time when I do my blending, when I take some of the ink off of my brush, I'm just going to add it to the center of the butterfly. Um, that's basically just removing some of that ink from my pen because I am going to cover that up with the olive um, center, that little butterfly body. And I did want to mention that I just kind of cut it for the sake of time, but I do end up using the um, clear embossing powder on all of these pieces as well. So I wanted to go for a little bit of an ombre. I wanted to bring in some of that pink. So we have the purple on the butterfly, the purple on the flowers, the green on the body of the butterfly and on the leaves. So I needed to bring in the pink a little bit more. I started with a really light pink and then I added a strip of medium pink and then I went with that same raspberry pink and I'm just using my blending brush, that watercolor brush, to blend it all together. Um, I ended up not liking that lighter pink. I thought that it was just a little bit too light, and so after I dry this, I'm going to bring back in that mid-tone, and because I have the lighter pink, as we talked about in color theory, when I go over the top area with that medium pink, it's still going to give me a third color. So I'm just going to be a little more intentional when I'm adding this color, really saturating the word, and then I'll blend out a little bit using the water, just trying to soften up the lines in between each of the colors. And then again, I'm gonna go around the edges of the word thanks. I like to cut my sentiments three times. I like that little bit of bulk on my card. Uh, I say this in most of my videos, I love dimension, so any way that I can get dimension, uh, it really does, for me, it just adds a lot more um, pizzazz to my cards. We're going to start putting some of our pieces together. I am using the, I don't know what it's called, is it the precision glue tip? 
It's, it's the new My Sweet Petunia. Actually, it's been out for a while this year. I recently purchased this because I was having some problems with my glue and I thought, well, let me give this a try. And so I went ahead and purchased this and I like it. So far, I really like it. I am using the fine tip. We'll see how, um, how much I like it in say six months because we all know that when we first get something and we're using it a lot of the times we like it and then over time it doesn't wear the way that we anticipate it doing so we'll see we'll see if this if this holds out but right now I really do like it so I'm adding some of those pinks to my glass mat. I'm going to spritz it with some water. I do have another piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock, and I'm just going to smush this onto the cardstock. And I wanted to get a little bit more of the lighter pink onto this panel, so I am going to add a little bit more of the lighter pink to my glass mat, spritz it with water, and then tap it onto that cardstock. Once I finish, I am going to dry the panel. And when I dry the panel, I am going to bring in that dark purple again because we do want to um, continue with the same colors. I really like that cohesiveness. And so I'm just going to do a little bit of splattering. I just added some water to the ink and then splattered it over the top. So there are all of my layers. I basically just did a quarter inch step on each layer. So the purple is a quarter inch smaller than my card panel my card base, which is an A2 top folding card base. I'm going to add some more dimension by using some foam tape. This is some pretty hefty foam tape. This is probably about a half an inch. <laughs> And so I'm going to try to center this onto my card panel. We all know this isn't my strong suit, but I think I do a decent job this time. And then I'll add my pink layer. Again, this is a quarter inch smaller than the purple layer. I'll center that onto this card base. And again, tying in all of those colors from our card. And then finally, we have our background. Once I get my background on, I'm going to start assembling the rest of the card. So as uh, I might not have mentioned this, but you can see that I am using that stem a little bit differently. So it did have a leaf at the end of it, which would allow you to maybe build more of a swag, but I wanted a single flower and I thought that I would be able to camouflage that top leaf, use the bit of a stem at the bottom to make it look like it was a, sting a single stem. I'm going to start by adding my butterfly. I do end up adjusting this because I didn't like where it was at. I thought it needed to be just a little bit higher to take up a little bit more of that top third of my card. So I'll get my flower down. And then I'm going to use that word thanks. I'm going to add it over the top of my stem. So I'm going to do just a little bit of layering. So there's the butterfly and I'm gonna play with it. I like those wings lifted. And once I get the word thanks on, then I'm going to decide that I wanna move that butterfly just a little bit higher. Finally, I realize that I do have a little bit more um, space in the center than what I was looking for, and so I am going to dig through my stash. I don't have a lot of jewels with me, but I did thankfully find a stash of jewels that had some purples, some pinks, and some whites in it. So I went ahead and laid those out onto my card panel. Here I'm just lifting that top layer of the daisy leaf because it's going to give it a little bit more dimension. I'll use that uh, 
glue gun to add my jewels and then I have this little jewel picker and that will complete my card for today. I did want to mention that Scrappy Tails did have a new release today. It is amazing. It is a traveling uh, release. So many fun pieces. I should be getting mine in the mail here shortly. So my next Scrappy Tail video will be with the new release. Head on over and check it out. I will have a link to the store in the description box below, as well as the link to this um, die set. Thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day. Thanks for watching.